Awesome. Thank you very much, Bill, and uh, greetings, everybody. I hope everyone's uh, doing well and really appreciate you all um, participating in this, and then hopefully we can uh, you know, have an interesting discussion, and, you, and, and this will be useful. Um, just a couple things before I get going. Um, uh, you know, I know, I assume you all know how to use the uh, question tools that um, are in the, uh, in the GoToMeeting uh, console. I am happy to, you know, be interrupted if there's something timely that you want to throw into the question thing, and Bill can, you know, stop me and interrupt. So I'm, I uh, definitely like the dialogue and hope we'll have, you know, have some questions as we go forward. Um, just a, a quick introduction of me and just more importantly just what my credentials are to be talking to you about what we're going to talk about tonight is um, I am the founder and CEO of Energy Circle and we uh, through our Energy Circle Pro platform uh, which is a kind of web and marketing platform that we provide exclusively to the efficiency and home performance contracting industry um, we work with about 200, and I think we're almost about 300 contractors in 47 states. So, um, so uh, point one is that we have a lot of uh, visibility in terms of um, the different configurations of people's business models. I think we work with probably every business model uh, that may exist in our industry, from you know, HVAC companies to HVAC companies that have made the move to home performance to Insulation contractors, uh, raiders, and auditors, and sort of, sort of everything you could imagine. Um, and we also work in every uh, market condition in the state: cold climates and warm climates, and uh, uh, states that have programs uh, that continue to run, states that never had programs, uh, as well as states that had them and, and have since gone. So, so we have a pretty interesting perspective, I think, on kind of the nature of the industry and so forth. So. And then a lot of what I will talk about is, you know, in terms of some data, it comes from the fact that we can see uh, actual web performance data across this network of, of companies in the aggregate. So, um, so I'm a pretty data-driven guy, and uh, I don't think there is a data set uh, in our industry that is as comprehensive as what we have as a result of, you know, of this many companies in this in this broad geographic reach. So that's the quick intro of me. Hope you know. Hope if you like what you hear, and, and if even if you don't, that you'll, you know, find me on LinkedIn and and social media and so forth. I'd love to I'd love to connect directly if we aren't already. Um, one last thing before I get going is we write a uh, newsletter uh, on a weekly basis that is a roll-up of a, a series of blog posts. So we're typically writing about two to three things a week, and it's always, um, you know, very much in line with the content you're going to hear me talk about today. The latest cutting-edge trends in in internet marketing and so forth. And so uh, it's all free, and and you're welcome to sign up. And if you go to energycircle.com/pro, you'll see all the information and be able to sign up for the newsletter there. So um, let me just start with what is probably the, you know, the, the sort of the, the biggest obvious thing in the, in, the, in the room, which is that we are living in a time in which marketing is, is an, in the midst of really radical change. You know, I know uh, the old ways that we, you know, many contracting companies used to do business in, in, in direct mail is very difficult when this is what people's mailbox looks like. Um, the internet uh, online uh, mediums are, are constantly throwing forward new ways of, of advertising, but many of them honestly are quite annoying. They're, you know, they're, they're pop-ups in the middle of your uh, email, and so people are getting increasingly, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, increasingly um, uh, sort of uh, filtered from uh, participating and paying attention to this stuff because it is so interruptive. Um, there are 200 million people in this country that are on the do not call list, so very difficult to make the old call centers work the way they once did. Um, this was an interesting thing that happened just, le just last week or two weeks ago when Facebook had their earnings call. Uh, the CFO talked about the possibility they maybe have hit the, the ceiling in terms of the amount of advertising that they can put into to Facebook, and some people are talking about this idea that even Facebook may have peaked, you know, peak Facebook. Um, and of course, the the old standby of our industry, the the yellow pages, uh, is an increasingly difficult uh, medium to make work. And it's not I'm not saying it's completely dead. 
Uh, there are some contrarians that, that we work with that are making it work. But the cost of the, of, the, of the yellow pages as an advertising medium does not, <clears throat> it no longer relates to what its value is, because this is what it really looks like in so many places. Now, on top of that, the other challenge that is, is in front of us is that in the old days, we could look at a marketing mix that would generate the leads that we needed to kind of drive the revenue of our companies via one or two major tactics that would drive, in, in the case of this particular pie chart, about 75% of your leads. In this case, you know, it's, it's a Yellow Pages program and a direct mail program. Today, um, there is no single uh, tactic that we can use that is driving anywhere near that much uh, uh, of our leads. So, so this is real data from a real company that we work with that you know, allowed me to use it as long as it was anonymous. Um, you'll see in their particular case that there is no one uh, slice of this pie that is any more than 16%. So this is, this is uh, we have to be involved in a lot of things, and we have to uh, be good at them and so forth. So, um, so this, is, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is sort of the nature of the beast these days. Um, and so, so we face a lot of challenges. You know, at the same time that marketing is uh, undergoing a significant amount of change, so too is our industry. You know, we've got all of the, the significant changes happening, whether it's the uh, sort of coming trend of home performance companies entering, excuse me, HVAC companies entering home performance, or the lack of, you know, the, the waning of, of funding, or what, all of the changes that are going on combined with the marketing makes for very, very interesting times. So, um, so that's my intro as to kind of where we are. And what I'm going to talk about today is sort of four major things uh, that I see as sort of the, you know, very important to our industry going forward. First is just the uh, constantly changing uh, nature of search. Um, secondly, I want to talk about the growing importance of Google Plus, um, which is the Google's um, uh, social network response to Facebook, in which uh, Google Places uh, is now living, the way that, that local businesses get listed and our businesses get listed. Uh, third, I want to talk about the, the um, rise of third-party reviews, and this is probably of all the things here, one of the most important in my mind that's happening this year. And then fourth, um, uh, which is kind of exciting, is that we're also living in a time with all this change, is that, that that therefore means that there are a lot of new products out there, new advertising products that um, that we can take advantage of that are that are pretty, pretty uh, interesting. So Bill, I thought this would be a good spot for maybe kicking off that um, sort of, you know, uh, question about um, you know how important online advertising is to folks you know now before I get going to this very good okay I've, I've launched the poll and I'd like everybody to just take a moment and to click on your screen and to vote uh, you can vote on only one of these and we're gonna wait till we get a significant number of people uh, clicking the buttons and we're up to 36 percent uh, if you could just give us a chance, and if you don't know what me means, it means just like what it sounds like. Okay, so we got enough people in there. I'm going to close the poll and then share the results. Uh, what we have, uh, Peter, is 38% find it's important, 13% very important, 25 somewhat, and 25 for so so. Yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, <clears throat> pretty interesting mix. So that's um, that's good. Let's you know that's 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 definitely uh, definitely interesting. All right. Um, so, my, all right. So let me start off. I want to talk uh, initially about so sort of the changing um, landscape of search that I mentioned, and specifically what that means from a kind of from the standpoint of keyword strategy. So, um, let me just try to simplify, you know, what how search works, and 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 I hope I'm not oversimplifying this, but. Um, but I do think it is less complicated than a lot of uh, consultants would have you believe. Um, winning in search is really about three things, context, authority, and increasingly social signals. And the reason for kind of distinguishing the social signals as a different color is that that's a relatively new thing over the course of the last 
18 to 24 months as to its relevance here. What, what each of these really mean is that context is all about site content, meaning that if the search term is air conditioning, Pleasanton, California, the uh, context means that you need to have contact, content on your site about air conditioning, Pleasanton, California, in order to be able to kind of win that search. So, so first and foremost, the matching up of that content, and we'll talk more about that. Secondly is the authority of your website. And the authority is, think of it like a grade that the search engine algorithm is giving to your website as to how authoritative and uh, important and powerful and high quality your website is. And there's a lot of factors that go into that, but the one factor that is probably still to this day the most important one is the number of links coming in to your site from, third, from other websites. So this idea of a link is the equivalent of a vote, right? If I, I'm linking to your site and I'm a high quality site, that value of that link comes through and, and lots of links indicate this must be an important and authoritative website. Thirdly, the third leg of the stool, as I mentioned, which is sort of new, is this idea of social signals, which is mostly the mention and presence of your company throughout the social media sphere. So, um, so that's that's sort of what uh, what makes up the the um, the mix. Now, um, just so we're all you know clear, the you know a typical search result in our industry, and I happen to just do this. Um, Yesterday, spray foam Long Island, spray foam insulation, Long Island, New York. Uh, this is what um, you know a typical result looks like. And if we sort of you know divide this up, what you see at the top of the page and in the right-hand column are all Google paid AdWords. We're going to talk some more about that in a second. Um, we then have, uh, and this is pretty typical, uh, three organic listings. Um, very often. Uh, uh, dominated by um, uh, by directories. In this case, you know, there's a t couple of contractors here that are doing well. Uh, there, and then there's a Better Business Bureau. So, and then you have the local, which we call a, sometimes we call this the pin listing. So, um, uh, that area below where you see seven uh, companies with the you know with the kind of map pin and so forth. That's the kind of local listing. So. So one of the things to observe, we're going to come back to this later, is just take a look at the real estate here. There is not very much organic uh, room on the page. So you know, organic meaning that naturally occurring searches. Google has looked at your websites and looked at the search and said you're high quality, and, and they they rank you high as you know as Rocket Spray Foam and the and PowerSmith have done here. So. So the real estate is, is getting increasingly challenged. And we're going to come back and talk more about the local piece. Um, so let's focus now just on this, you know, the piece which is about the content, OK? Um, and to win uh, that search, you have to have that content. But the question comes up as to, well, what content, you know, specifically? And so this is where we start to think about um, uh, success here is really about matching up the search, you know, your site content with where the search volume is. And so very important to know about uh, the search volume and some of the subtleties that exist in, uh, in search volume. And I, I've got three slides here, I think, and, and it's, you know, there's a, there's a risk of being somewhat anecdotal about some of this, uh, these terms, but I, 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 I chose these three for kind of uh, exemplary reasons, and the you know the first one is really about terms that we use to uh, indicate the diagnostic phase of the work that we do. So, energy rating, energy assessment, energy audit, energy auditor, energy auditing. You know those things around the energy audit, and and there's obviously a lot of talk, and depending on what part of the country you're from and, and programs you're in, a lot of people are saying don't use the term energy audit. But what this you know data is showing is that becomes the term right and so you know while it may be uh, makes sense logically to say you know energy assessment sounds better the fact of the matter that there's 60,000 monthly searches for energy audit 
these are across the country, by the way, on a monthly basis versus 8,100 for energy assessment is just a massive difference. Um, and the subtlety of little things like the distinction between auditor and auditing and audit uh, is just important stuff to know as you're thinking about your content. Uh, when we get to the, the, the work, and, and, and here I'm referring to you know, how we define the concept of doing whole house home performance oriented work with a whole house uh, perspective, we as an industry have a real challenge here because there is no real good name for that. So, so home performance, which you know we refer to ourselves as that's the industry, uh, gets about 18,000 uh, searches versus you know much less than just even the diagnostic phase. I only put energy audit in there as kind of a benchmark of of volume. So nothing, energy retrofit or energy upgrade or, or even something like deep energy retrofit comes close to even what this, this very initial front end diagnostic piece is that we call an energy audit. I threw weatherization in here, um, which I'm sure we all can agree is sort of contaminated to a certain extent by the low income nature, but, but there's a real challenge in that um, we don't have a particular term for you know what the nature of this work is. Um, people, uh, homeowners, uh, when they think about energy efficiency and they're out kind of searching, um, typically, you know, most of us I think know that the first, first thing that comes to mind of the, of, the, of the average homeowner is when they think about efficiency in their home are windows. And then the second thing is insulation. And so, so just, you know, this graph was just intended to give you some sense of the uh, relative nature of search volume for things like insulation and heating and air conditioning relative to a lot of the terms that we in the industry use ourselves. So, so it's very, just very, very important to make sure when thinking about this, use the, the free tools that are out there that Google has. Uh, and, and I, you know, sometimes I talk about that, I, you know, uh, contact me afterwards if, if necessary, and I can give you links to these tools. But, you know, match it up with where the volumes are and recognize the fact that more often than not, uh, a homeowner is self-diagnosing. You know, they, they have a cold room and they've just said, I need new uh, insulation or I need a bigger air conditioner because it's too hot or whatever, whatever it is. So, so that's um, a little bit on the anecdotal side, but, but I wanted to, to do that. The other thing I wanted to just say is that even when you d dive into a particular category, in this particular case, uh, insulation, there are significant differences between um, the different types of insulation. So we don't have to go through all this in detail, but you know, spray foam has a lot of appeal. It's got a lot. There's just a lot of search volume out there relative to, let's say, cellulose or so forth. And then the thing to know here is that the way it gets spoken about is all across the board, right? Some people may call it spray foam or spray foam insulation or two-part insulation or closed cell insulation. So there's lots and lots of terms. And to win, it's important to kind of be on your game about all of this uh, stuff. So what is most important uh, in terms of content on your site is uh, these services pages. Because of all the things that people search for, the ones that tend to have the dominant volume are the ones about uh, the service. You know, it's people looking for a service. So, so whether it's attic insulation or cellulose or spray foam, or they're looking for an energy audit, or they're looking for a new furnace or solar or new windows, in order to win search, you've got to have that content on your site. And so that is, is, uh, you know, is, is critically, uh, critically important. I'm going to talk some more about that in a second. Uh, recently, um, well, let me step back for a second. Google um, changes their algorithm uh, constantly. And by the way, when I say Google, I'm sort of euphemistically talking about all the search engines. But you, Google, as we all know, is kind of the dominant player. About 76% of all the traffic to the, our, our whole energy circle network is from Google. Um, so 
Google from time to time makes uh, major changes to their algorithm and they give them names and the most recent one was Hummingbird and it's um, uh, it's a significant one it's you know the name was supposed to be precise and fast and you know many people have called this the biggest overhaul to search uh, the, since 2009 and really I'll talk more about it in a second it's about this notion of conversational uh, search uh, it was announced on August 20th, but they said it had been in place for 30 days prior to that. And in our view, we have not seen any major uh, up or down movement in terms of people's performance since this uh, thing. But we do think it's an important thing to know about going forward. And essentially what is meant by this uh, idea of conversational search is that uh, this would be an example. Rather than kind of a simple two to three word search term, energy efficient furnace, people are becoming increasingly trusting of the search engines to be able to ask a um, more uh, kind of specific question. You know, how do you determine if a furnace is efficient? And part of this obviously has to do with the fact that you know, we now have these mobile devices in our hands, and we've got you know Siri if you're using an Apple user, but but you know, but we can talk to our devices. So so that's the concept of more conversational sorts of search. So so it's important to think about this um, content going forward. There's a sort of a raging debate amongst many experts in the field as to whether or not this means you should go match your content up or whether you should just do it right. In other words, Google is going to be smart enough to say, to match up how do you determine if a furnace is efficient with content that says energy efficient furnace. But I think that um, this converse, excuse me, conversational search language is very customer centric you know, and very typical of our industry in which people don't really understand. Uh, you know, and we are in the we need to be so educational that I think this kind of content is really good. You know, how do I save on energy costs? What you know, what is a blower door test? Uh, how much does an energy audit cost? Or you know, etc. So I think this would be really good, and and so it leads you to the to the question of you know, is there content that you can create uh, about you know this and use these conversational terms? And I think it's a it's an easy opportunity. All of you know you're out in the field, you're constantly getting questions. Uh, record those and turn them into an FAQ on your site. The other piece about this content thing that is uh, increasingly challenging but increasingly important is the fact that Google really uh, values content that is fresh. And in this case, we're talking more about the middle uh, leg of that stool that I talked about, the, the authority uh, piece of that, which is uh, fresh content, you know, websites that have a steady stream of content uh, on them are <clears throat> uh, increasingly valued and that's, that's how you gain some authority. And this is, of course, extremely challenging for most small businesses to, to you know, to mess with. But but there is uniform agreement amongst all of the experts, and especially a lot of as we're starting to see the, you know, the predictions for 2014 coming in, everybody is saying that fresh content and nuke and content is, is the name of the game for, for winning in search. The thing that, uh, that I want to just impress upon you is that everything matters and everything counts. So while that can sound intimidating and it might sound like, you know, I've got to be, you know, a blogger, I've got to write a lot, uh, every change you make to your website even the smallest ones counts as freshness. So just adding a new testimonial or creating a new case study or making an adjustment to a, one of your pages in terms of a service description or adding a gallery if you've got some photo uh, features on your website. Um, uh, adding photos is good. And as I just said, you know, just maybe adding a question and answer section about, uh, you know, we could have one question and answer section on your site or you could have one for each of your major services. And whenever somebody throws a new question your way, go at it and answer it and that counts as fresh content. So, so uh, challenging but something that, um, that we all kind of need to, 
to try. So Bill, I thought this would be a good time for the next poll question on... Uh... Okay, we're going to launch the poll here. Uh, it's been launched. How often are you updating your website? So I'd like to see you vote on that. You have uh, one choice amongst the five that are put up there. And we'd like to see uh, we've got 40, 50 percent, 60 percent, 80 percent. Okay, we're going to close the poll. I think that's representative. In sharing back the poll, we see that the leader here is once a month at 56 percent, followed by rarely at 22 percent, and then once a week, 11 percent, and don't have a site yet, 11 percent. No one's doing it daily. And, and, and l let me just say something. I don't, you know, freshness is important. You've obviously heard me say that. Um, I would, the, the risk, I think, of, of hearing me say, talk about this and kind of getting, uh, you know, running out there and trying to, you know, to improve upon it is I would rather have you be steady than, uh, than, than episodic. By that I mean, don't listen to Trost say that this is super important and go out and for the next, you know, for the next 30 days be once a week and then fall to two, you know, once every two weeks and then fall back to, you know, once a month kind of thing. It's really more important in a lot of ways that you decide what is a sustainable pace of new content for your site uh, and kind of try to stay with that. So even this I like better than necessarily having a lot of peaks and valleys. So once a month is not bad. I mean, I, again, um, you know, we're not uh, in our world, you know, and, and we are looked at. You know, Google met, looks at us contextually. That is not bad. So cool. Well, that, that's, um, that's interesting. All right. Let me, um, let me jump now to this thing called Google Plus. Um, and as I mentioned, Google Plus is uh, some you know consider to be Google's answer to Facebook as a social social network, but we are caught up in this because uh, Google is basically using all of its clout and power and leverage to uh, make sure that this social network of, that they've done succeeds. And so what they've done is they've merged the old Google Places where we were all located into uh, into their Google Plus network or in the process of doing so. And therefore, um, you know, this is having a big impact on us. So just quickly, uh, there are kind of two parts to this, right? One is the old Google Places, which is Google called Google Plus Local. They've stopped calling it everything. It's incredibly confusing and just mind-numbingly frustrating for, for many of us. But, uh, but that was what formal Google Plus was. It was a critical link for those pin results, those blended results that I talked about. Extremely important for organic ranking. Uh, the most critical review location, which we're going to talk about in just a second. And may have been created for you whether you set it up or not. So in other words, if Google knows your business exists, you could have one of these pages created even if you haven't claimed it. Now. In addition to that, there's a separate thing which is called a Google Plus business page, which is just like a Facebook page. So it's more social, it has posts and so forth. Um, it's kind of the new and cutting edge thing. And for about 13 months, Google has been saying that they are merging these. And over the course of the last, let's say, 30, 40 days, we're seeing a lot more of this merger activity. So, so. Um, and the reason that this is so critical is that that pin result where you see the red square on this particular slide, those rankings, those results are results of, that are driven by your Google Plus page. Okay? If you don't have one, you cannot be in this search. And I didn't you know, I didn't uh, do it for lots of search terms, but essentially every substantial search term in our industry, every service, generates this kind of a local result. In this case, Furnace Repair Long Island. Uh, in this case, Energy Audit Long Island. You'll notice in this case, there's a shorter list, but, uh, but, it, is, and it, but it is equally important and equally prominent. So critical to you uh, ranking in this kind of listing to have that page. Um, 
this is what the newest iteration of the page looks like. There was a design change just literally about 10 days ago. Uh, uh, this particular company doesn't have a lot going on here, but, but this is, I can tell that this is a claimed page, right? So one of the things you've got to do is go find your page, find out if you have one, and then uh, the good news, good news, bad news is that Google will make you verify that you own it. That's good. The verification process can at times be very frustrating and difficult, and that's the part that can be challenging. Um, but that's sort of what the page looks like. You'll notice right front and center uh, in the middle is the review summary. This company doesn't have any, but um, I'll show you in a second a company that does. And so one of the things that we're going to start talking about in just a second is how important these reviews are and just how uh, <clears throat> prominent Google is making them. Um, a, a merged page, meaning this is the combination of that social page like Facebook and your Google Places page, looks like this. And the primary indicator is what I've circled up at the top, which is it's got four tabs, you know, an About tab, a Posts tab, a Photos tab, and a YouTube tab. And this is one, um, this is Dan Thompson's company in Los Angeles uh, that is, um, you know, I think a pretty typical of what you're going to start to see, which is you see that these reviews um, uh, are right up at the top. And you know, in his case, he's done a good job. He's got you know, an average of, of 4.9 out of 5. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and then, but I think it's very important is as they've continued to redesign this, one of the things that's happening is that the, the prominence of the review uh, totals, like you see in the 4.9 and the stars, as well as the reviews themselves you see down below, are just being pushed further and further to the top. There's a, clearly a big effort going on at Google right now to, to make reviews extremely important. Now, one of the things that's important to know is, I said, is you could have one of these pages and not know it exists. It doesn't prevent people from reviewing. So this is somebody uh, in Connecticut. This is the old style rating. But you know, this is someone who's got a page, doesn't know it exists, it exists has not claimed it and has a one-star review. And as is so typical, that review is not about any work that actually get done, it got done. It's about you know, a slow response to a phone call or something like that. So, so very important to, you know, to make sure that you know what's going on here. Because as you'll see in a second, it's just becoming increasingly important. The point I want to make, though, is that the page uh, we we're just looking at is not as important as the data that is in it. <clears throat> because, because it's Google, that data is essentially going everywhere. So this is an example of a search for where you know the company's name. You know, I was driving and I saw a truck and I remembered and I went and searched for Evergreen Home Performance. All of the data that you see on the right side of this page in the, in the red, red rectangle, 100% of that is coming from the Google Plus page. The other thing that's coming from the Google Plus page is what you see up here in, the, in their primary listing, which is that review list again. And by the way, uh, the reviews, the stars will show up when you cross the five review threshold. Until five, you won't get the stars. But uh, once you cross that five, you're going to show those stars. And I think you'd agree that, you know, you look at this page. This is pretty successful. You know, if I could, if I had, if I was Richard at Evergreen Home Performance and I was successful at attracting somebody here, this is a pretty impressive search page. I, I see a big thing in the right. I see strong reviews, I see photos, I see site links, and so forth. It's a pretty, pretty impressive thing. But this data, I guess, again, the key thing, all on the right side is all coming out of that. Uh, so uh, where you control that data is in the Google Places dashboard. And this is the new dashboard. And it's, uh, uh, this is something that um, I think is uh, there's an old dashboard and a new dashboard. Most people have the new one. Um, this is where you kind of you go. And you want to just be very uh, diligent uh, and careful about making sure that you get this fully updated. It's very important to have your name and address and phone number exactly you know, right and correct, to have a good description. Um, 
and you have a choice here of you know a, a, a few different things that you can put in. The category in which you list yourself is extremely important because that then becomes tied to you as a company and throughout all of search and everywhere Google associates that category with your company and so uh, one of the challenges is that uh, in the recent changes as we have more categories I think there this shows uh, 10 I think um, there are more categories but the big change they made most recently is that you cannot uh, use a category other than what they have preset. Okay, and so of course there is no such thing in Google's categories as home performance or energy auditor. You know there are only um, some fairly high-level terms, and so we've done the research and looked across the, you know the the what's available at and what's relevant to us. And you can see there's some obviously good ones for many of us, air conditioning contractor or air conditioning repair service or air duct cleaning service, you know, furnace repair service, heating contractor, HVAC, uh, insulation. So, so there are some, uh, you know, there are some good ones here, but obviously you've got to tailor it to your, you know, to your own uh, business model. But very important to make sure that you've got these characters covered and as many of them as possible. I wouldn't recommend using categories you're not really in the business of, but uh, but making sure you fill those in is very important. The other new thing that's uh, just starting to happen over the course of the last couple of weeks is in that right-hand display that I mentioned, we're starting to see some examples of people putting of uh, excuse me Google putting in service area maps. So really important, I think, to make sure that that's accurate. And so where you control that in that dashboard is you click a little box that says, I deliver goods and services to my customers at their location. You can do both. So if you, you know, if you have a showroom, most of us obviously are doing most of our work in the field. And then you have two choices. You can either list uh, every, the zip code of every community you work in, or you can set a radius. So. So really, really important to get that done because it's showing more importantly, and that radius or those, you know, those latitudes and longitudes within there that uh, that that <clears throat> Google now knows it becomes associated with you and your company. So Bill, let's uh, let's go. Let's see where folks are in terms of kind of their status with their uh, <clears throat> with their Google Plus page. Okay, so this is a real simple question. Have you claimed your Google Plus page at this point? Just give us a vote, and we'll uh, let you know how things end up. Okay, we got 80%, 100% voted here. Great. Wow, what an easy question, huh? Sharing the results here, we'll see that 80% have not claimed their page. Only 20% have. Yeah. So uh, if, I, <laughs> if I have one recommendation out of this is, uh, go try to find it. You know, give me an email shout if you know if I can, if you can. Uh, you know, it, one way to do it, by the way, is your company. Just you know, Google Plus and your company name, and and obviously Google Search is pretty good at, at finding it. So, um, but definitely go. You know, take a look. And what will happen, by the way, you'll see a, a little link there that says this is my business, and uh, Google will send you a postcard. It's usually, currently, it's taken about a week, but. There can be lots of problems with this with this verification process, and you know we've worked with lots of people, and I'd be more than happy to you know to chat with you about how to make it work if uh, if you have any challenges. Um, all right, so let's now shift over to the the rise of third party reviews, and um, you know I want to I want to preface this by saying that third party reviews are really word of mouth you know the oldest and still very best uh, marketing approach that exists in our industry word of mouth is still king and but customer reviews uh, public reviews that exist with with such a spread out out in the world uh, are, are kind of a way of thinking of word of mouth on steroids um, the a few few slides on some data um, this is a, a kind of a local Consume local business uh, survey that's done, and just look to the right. You know, basically, positive re customer reviews make me more likely to use a local business. And you know, the the this is over th the last three years, and you just see how strongly 
this is growing from the standpoint of what consumers expect. Um, in when you look across different types of businesses, uh, there's nothing exactly relevant to us. But if you look at tradesmen uh, and you look at builder roofer, uh, they are definitely to the side of this curve that is um, where it is much more important to have uh, reputation uh, and to have those kinds of reviews as a factor in the homeowner's decision about hiring you. It's not surprising we are our contractors. You know, we're not as low in opinion as Congress, but but we have that challenge of not being looked at well. So it's even more important, I think, to, to us than it is for some other businesses. Um, if you just look at Google search volume over a long period of time for people who are actually searching for reviews, in other words, putting the word review in a search, the curve is fairly fairly straight straight up over a period of time. This is even a little bit old. But but there's definitely, you know, people know that this is out there and people are increasingly looking for those reviews even before they look at you. The other factor here is that these reviews are everywhere. And so I showed you this before, you know, it is pretty hard to do a search for your company and not have those reviews be incorporated into the search result. So this one in particular, as we saw before, is really positive, but you can imagine if you know if you if it was the if you weren't doing well, uh, this would be a really negative thing to show. Um, Yelp, which uh, you know in my world uh, up until recently, I consider to be a place mostly for restaurants, uh, is making a significant move into the service industry, and so this is a search. For example, in Pleasanton, California, for air conditioning, and the top four organic results in this particular case are all Yelp results. You know, two, one, the first one is a, a company within Yelp. The second one is a directory. The third is a company. The fourth is a directory. And so, this is this is not uniform, by the way, across the country in the sense that um, it looks like the more technologically sophisticated areas are the ones that are having more and more of this, uh, but. Uh, but Yelp is coming, and so I would uh, I would encourage you to you know keep an eye out for it. Um, again, just you know these were just the point here being that reviews are everywhere. This is the Google Plus page. Just look at how prominent that is on the page. Uh, if you know now there are pop-ups for reviews. You know they are they just tend to be everywhere. And even in just a mixed search result, you know they are there. So so this is not really something that can be avoided. I think it's coming your way whether you like it or whether or, or, or not. And then you know the other thing I would say, when you look at a search result like this and somebody on the list has you know nine Google reviews and a 4.7 stars and the rest of the list has nothing, uh, in my view, the person with the stars, first of all, is going to get the eyes attention because it's more prominent. Secondly, I think the chances of them getting that link are much, much greater than somebody who's got, you know, who just says Google Plus page, right? And so, so, um, so really, really important. Something that's very cool, and this is literally like five days old, is that in that Google Places uh, dashboard that I just mentioned, they just added this reviews tab, and somebody called it the mother of all review dashboards. So basically what you can see here is that uh, Google has sort of aggregated all of your reviews, both the ones that you have, you know, these two at the top are, are within Google, but then down below, and this would keep on going, um, all the reviews that you may have. So another really good reason to make sure you get this, your, your places dashboard set up, because this, there is no better source of your review information than this. Um, and this is the second tab of it, which shows you it's pretty interesting. You know how many total reviews, where they're from, and then what your average rating is. This is Dewitt's doing pretty well in this case, um, but really, really interesting. And this literally was added last week, so it's something that you can get as soon as you take control over that uh, dashboard. So a fantastic way to monitor what's going on. In my opinion, the priorities for reviews should be Google first for all the reasons that I just talked about. Secondly, uh, Angie's list and uh, Angie's list and Yelp, as long as those are relevant, uh, 
in your area, right? So uh, take a look at whether Yelp is starting to emerge the way I showed it in some of those California searches and West Coast searches and, and New York we're seeing a lot of Yelp. Uh, and Angie's List, obviously, you know if this is relevant to you there. But those two, I think, are, you know, obviously the most relevant to us as contractors. Yelp is making a big, big move. Those are the two that I would prioritize. City Search, I put on this list as third because it is a feeder to so many other sites. So, uh, so it, it, there are about 15 other sites that actually use City Search reviews. So if you're going to, you know, start with Google, uh, Angie's List and Yelp second, and then City Search uh, third. One of the ways to find out, you know, the answer to that question is just do some routine searches in your area. So this is just Insulation Contractor Seattle, and in this case, you know, you've got Yelp and Angie's List coming up very high, and so that's, that's an indicator that in your region it's an important thing. The other thing you can do is, you know, do a search for your own company name with, the, with review on it and see what's coming up high. So that's, uh, um, that's really important. One of the things that's increasingly challenging about this, so you know, you listen to me again, you run out and say, all right, guys, we gotta we gotta rally the troops and we gotta go get some reviews, is that the Google and Yelp in particular have their filters turned up extremely high. So meaning filters of trying to weed out what are false reviews. So never pay somebody to write a review, never never use one of these uh, sort of sketchy services that may call you from time to time and say, we'll get you reviews. What you need to do is have a steady, regular pace. The biggest single filter we're seeing with respect to you know, reviews getting submitted and then not actually shown is if they come in a burst. So, so Google calls this velocity. You want to have a nice steady pace of reviews and try not to have that big kind of spike. It just should be regular. Uh, in, in Google, you cannot use a duplicate review, right? So Google knows everything about everything right on the web. And if that same copy exists on your website or in another review site, Google will not publish it. So I realize this probably got, has you tearing your hair out, and it does you know, for me as well. But the reviews you focus on for Google is uh, um, you know need to be unique to there. Never pay for them. Don't review yourself. Uh, you know don't put uh, you know the one particular thing is if you put links or URLs in reviews that tends to be a, a, a link. And if you can, and this again is incredibly frustrating, uh, limit the direct links from your website to your Google Plus page. You know you would think that this would be fine, right? You know, if you had a good experience with us, here's a link. Review us on that. What we found is that link is sometimes a filtering event. So again, something we could talk a lot more about. But um, the worst thing here is, you know, you put some good effort into it. You get it's not easy to get folks to to review on your behalf, and yet it's horrible if they uh, they do they take the time and then the review never shows. So let's see, build uh, what folks have to say about. You know this idea of reviews and and uh, um. okay. So again, another simple yes/no question: Are you planning to actively manage your reviews in 2014? I guess after Peter's kind of scolded you into it, uh, what are you going to answer? Here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we got 80% uh, voting. We'll close the poll now. And Peter, you did your job. <laughs> I guess I did my job. <laughs> Good. Well done, folks. Uh, yeah, well, usually, you know, scare tactics tend to work. Um, all right, let me uh, wrap up here with just a discussion of, you know, now some of the kind of growing array of, of kind of ad products that are out there. And, um, uh, you know, there are um, a lot of online advertising options, uh, you know, have existed for quite a while. Um, and they're growing, you know, and, and I think that's actually pretty exciting. It can be a little bit intimidating and complicated, but but the good news is I think they're they're good. Um, Google AdWords, which uh, uh, you know some of you may have tried, this is you know the probably the the biggest uh, dog in this in this game is is improving. So you know, folks have I know a lot of folks 
stuck their toe in the water, tried Google AdWords, and, and couldn't make it work. Uh, it's improving and getting better, and we are absolutely seeing performance. The social platforms are, are adding more and more uh, advertising mediums. I'll talk about them in a second, Facebook and Twitter. And then there's this other product that's called retargeting that I'll talk about. What is most uh, exciting about these things is that they are so hyper-targeted, which I'll show you in just a second, that they result in the cost being extremely low. And so, so in contrast to most forms of advertising where you, know, you had a lot of waste, because you're talking to people who weren't relevant, this stuff is so targeted that it can be very, very cheap. So um, again, I just to make the case for the importance of Google uh, <clears throat> AdWords, one of the reasons, and this is, you know, this product, by the way, for Google is something like 90% of their total revenue is comes from these Google AdWords. And so, so the real estate that is available, you know, if you're not in that, it just the real estate is less and less and less in terms of what's available to you. Um, there's some great other features about it. First, you know, as I discussed, the targeting and the reach. You know, you can set uh, your ads by zip code and and really dial in. Uh, I made the point about how much Google real estate. One of the things that studies continue to show is that. Uh, people who click on those AdWords have more commercial intent, so they tend to be buyers. You know, they are when they click on an ad for insulation, it's because they're looking for an insulation contractor. Uh, there is an enormous amount of learning to be done from when you get out into uh, a Google AdWords campaign and see how specific search terms are performing. When I, all that data I was showing before on those graph slides is sort of generic, it's countrywide. Uh, it's hard to get it down to you know to to the to the detail, and when you run Google AdWords, you'll know very precisely that you know the search term spray foam insulation is the highest one that's converting for you. Um, in general, uh, you need to make enough of a commitment to let this go and run for a couple of months to see if it's working for you. But uh, you have total control over your budget. You know you set the spend at whatever you can afford. And I think if you you know spent a few hundred, maybe let's say five hundred thousand, two thousand dollars over the course of a couple of months, you're going to know whether this is driving leads a most, and then most importantly whether you are converting those leads to work, right? So, so uh, but you can figure that out pretty quickly, and so the risk level uh, is is fairly low. And you know we're finding that um, that it's you know these are very cost effective and good quality leads when managed uh, in a you know in a good way so I'm, I'm I, I didn't used to think this but I'm increasingly an advocate of pay-per-click advertising the social ads have incredible targeting and if you look to the right here I did this just earlier today uh, down here you know this I picked five towns around us um, people 25 years and older, people who like charity and causes, environmentalism, family, home improvement, or sustainability, who graduated from college, who are parents, and who are either married or engaged. So uh, there isn't a choice for home ownership, sadly enough, uh, which is kind of amazing, but a lot of indicators. And so what that did is take um, you know, probably thousands and thousands and thousands of people on Facebook and narrowed it down to 1,200 that you could actually target with a Facebook ad uh, that is very, very specific. Now, Facebook advertising is challenging. You know, um, you know, I, I just sort of, you know, pulled up a page today. Um, I'll, there's a lot of blindness to it. I'm not suggesting that these are necessarily fantastic ads. It's hard to kind of cut through. But the cost, again, when you're that targeted, is very inexpensive. And there's some growing evidence that even if this is just awareness, you know, even if you're just building awareness of your company in this, uh, in the advertising in, in social media, it can help give lift to other parts of your marketing efforts. So, so I'm an advocate of giving it a try, mostly because it's just, you know, it's not going to cost you much. Um, retargeting. So, this is this. These are the creepy ads that. Uh, I'm sure all of you have experienced that follow you around after you've been to a website. So you shopped for, uh, you know, for 
uh, shoes on Zappos or something, and you find that an ad with that following you around. Um, the way it works is that a visitor to your website has to a visit to your website has to happen first, and once that's happened, we then cookie that user. And when that user goes around the web, in this particular case, uh, you know, I'm on Green Building Advisor, and I happen to be on the Indo Windows, uh, you know, site before. I see the Indo Windows ads uh, there, and it's uh, for our industry in which you know I think the likelihood of a purchase on the first visit to your website is fairly low. The reminder and the presence of this can be really good, and. And again, because it is so narrowly focused to only those people who have visited you, the price of it is extremely low. I mean, and um, uh, and it exists in social media too. This was a, you know, I, I one of the new uh, services for doing retargeting advertising is called Perfect Audience. They just announced a new thing yesterday. I looked at their website, and today their ads are are in front of my face uh, in my Facebook stream today. So. Creepy in a way, but I think we're finding very, very effective uh, and a fantastic way to build up the awareness of your company. So, you know, it, it is again, as I said, a considered decision. It's very cost effective, and you know, we use this, and I, I get tackled by people at, at at trade shows and conferences that say, "How much money do you spend on your ads?" It's unbelievable. I see your ads everywhere, and the truth is, I think our spend last month was forty nine dollars. So, so um, that is kind of close to the hour, Bill. I think we had one more poll question on yes. whether I, folks were I've using just, any of the. I've just launched it, and we're going to see if you're currently advertising online. Um, you would have heard an expletive from me when you said you're only spending forty-nine dollars online. I'm glad I was muted. <laughs> See, we got 70, 80 percent voted. Okay, we'll close the poll out now, and I will share it to show that uh, 75 percent of the people watching today are not currently advertising online. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, good. Well, let's. Um, I know we only got a couple minutes left, Bill, but I'm sorry if I ate up too much of the time yapping. But I'd love to, you know, love to take questions. Um, Comments, um, rebuttals, if there are any. Not seeing any activity yet in the question window. Hope everyone knows how to use that. There should be a pane in your control panel to the right of your screen, which says questions. You'll be able to type them in, and uh, I'll, I'll see them pop up. Then I can read them to Peter, or perhaps you can even see them too. Apparently, you've done a particularly awesome job presenting. Hang on, hang on. Here comes one. Uh, can you see the question, Peter? Or would you like me to, to read it to you? I do not see it, Bill. Okay. Oh, hang on. Maybe. No, I don't. Okay. From Kate. Um, well, Kate's just saying she learned a lot of new information and been inspired to Google+. Plus. I think we've just created a verb here, Peter, to Google+. Plus. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Well, uh, if that, I think you said Kate. Well, um, once it went, keep me posted on how it goes, um, and uh, and then you know make sure to just let me know when it's set up, and I'll become your in 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 the world of Google Plus. We enter each other's circles, so uh, so I will uh, we will join circles <laughs> in, in Google Plus. Um, hey, I'm not seeing you very much. We got a, a thank you from Pete Pacero. I think you know him, uh, Peter. I do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess with um, with that, we'll uh, we'll close it out today. Again, any of you that are seeking BPI CEUs, please, please email me at bill at truetechtools.com with your BPI certificate number so I can match it up when I submit the attendance report. I like to get the attendance report out within about a day. So if you could do that within the next, uh, say by early tomorrow morning or by, by noon tomorrow, so I can send the report in tomorrow afternoon, and then we get it all off our desk and taken care of. But I do want to thank um, Peter here for a great presentation. I think I learned a little bit more, and actually I've probably seen Peter's presentation 
about three or four times, and every time it changes, which is lends significance to what he mentioned earlier about how this is continuing to evolve. Yeah. Well, Bill, thank you very much, and that's uh, especially gratifying to hear from you because you are a sophisticated <laughs> player in the online marketing space, so I'm glad there was something here useful to you, but um, really appreciate everybody's time and attention, and uh, uh, again, my contact information is here. Love to, you know, connect with you and hear from you, um, and just uh, keep in touch. So don't hesitate to email me or or give me a shout if if I can be of use on any of this stuff. Okay, thank you, everyone. We'll close it out and uh, have a good evening. Thanks. <clears throat> see you, Bill. Bye. See you later. Thank you.